Hello everyone, it's Mason and you're watching Aerospace Talk with Mason. I'm in Grand Forks as usual, staying frosty. In this week's episode of Aerospace Talk with Mason, I'm going to be covering my top 10 of aerospace movies. Now, the criteria for these movies is, is this movie more realistic? And if so, it's most likely going to be on this movie. It's, are you a spaceship? or like space-like movie or you planes it doesn't matter i put them together that's why it's aerospace uh in my next video i'll be covering the top five space movies and that's just no regular like is it involving space like very i'm excited about that one too um so you're also going to be a little bit surprised on what i chose for number one but let's get back into it you know Let's get the ESPN Sports Center top 10. Dun -dun -dun, dun -dun -dun. All right, coming in at number 10, October Sky. This movie is based in an off of a 1950s mining town called Coldwood. Homer Hickman is a kid, only one future in sight to work in the local coal mine like his father. However, in 1957, everything changes when the first artificial satellite Sputnik goes up into orbit. With that event, Homer becomes inspired to learn how to build rockets. With his friends and the local nerd, Homer sets to do just that by trial and error. A lot of error. Unfortunately, most of the town, especially Homer's father, thinks that it is a big waste of time. Only one teacher in their high school understands their efforts and lets them know that they could become contenders in the National Science Fair with college scholarships being the prize. Now the gang must learn to perfect their, air, or their craft and overcome many problems facing them as they shoot for the stars. Now what I'm going to be rating this, these movies is on the Rotten Tomatoes scale of 1% to 100%. And I rated this film at a 78%. It was a okay film in the first place. Uh, it's a Disney film. Uh, you know, base, typical Disney film. Uh, someone, like, realistic Disney film. Someone has a problem. They have to overcome it. And they work together as a team to do it kind of deal. And I, th I thought it was a pretty good film all all together so i gave it a 78 and it comes in at number 10. number nine dunkirk uh evacuation of allied soldiers from the british empire and france who are cut off and surrounded by the german army from the beaches and harbor of dunkirk france between may 26 and june 4th of 1940 during the battle of france in world war ii i gave this an 80 percent uh it's an okay film. I wish it... It doesn't have a lot of dialogue in it. Um, and... Uh, where this movie... You could say, oh, it's not really that much of an aviation movie. Not, you know, aerospace movie doesn't have that much to do with aerospace. Uh, well, without the Royal Air Force fighting off the Luftwaffe, you know, watch out for the flying Belgian waffle of the German Air Force, uh, you know, great name for an Air Force, Luftwaffe, Luf, Luftwaffe, I don't know. it's Luftwaffe something like that, I don't, I can't quite remember, but it's a pretty great name for Air Force, but the, the Royal Air Force has to fight off the Luftwaffe, also help so the ships can go by and everyone is safe in that whole situation because it's basically, as you watch the movie, a whole bunch of people are lined up on the shores. You know, if, you know, someone of the German Air Force just wanted to get their kills in, you know, on Call of Duty, just lined down, just, it, it was a very messy situation. And so, uh, the Royal Air Force played a pretty big key in that uh, movie, I'd say. Or in, even in that situation. Uh, then uh, number eight, Red Tails. Italy of 1944, as the war takes its toll on the Allied forces in Europe, a squadron of black pilots known as the Tuskegee Airmen 
are finally given the chance to prove themselves in the sky. Even as the battle of discrimination on the ground, this tribute to the unsung heroes who rose above the extraordinary challenges and ultimately scored into history. Uh, great movie. I loved it. Uh, it. You know, it's hard to put it up with my top five. But I definitely thought it was a movie that came up in the top ten for sure. Uh, great story behind it. You know, uh, I think they also, are, it, you know, everything about this, uh, I'd say uh, I did a uh, history report on one of the Tuskegee Airmen. Uh, Red Tails, like, those pl planes were awesome. Uh, cool looking planes, uh, pretty sure P-51 Mustangs, if I'm, it's, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, you know, just tear me apart, because I'm sure you will in this, in the comments, once I announce number one, um, and, uh, yeah, I, I rated it an 81, uh, then number seven, the first, or first man, the first man, I can't remember, uh, it's a bioptic on the life of legendary American astronaut Neil Armstrong from 1961 to 1969 on his journey to becoming the first man to walk on the moon, exploring sacrifices and costs on the uh, nation and Neil himself during, during one of the most dangerous missions in history of space travel. Uh, I thought it was an okay movie. I thought it was a little bit overhyped, uh, kind of, uh, yeah, I don't know, it was a good movie, I, and, uh, for those of you that are like, oh, this is just trying to prove the conspiracy wrong, you know, and the people that don't think that, uh, we actually landed on the moon, I dare you to tell that to, uh, Buzz Aldrin, he give you a good old one-two right in the face and knock you out. I'm pretty sure you guys can go look up the clip of Buzz Aldrin beating some dude's butt because he uh, was like, oh, we didn't actually land on the moon. And he's like, dude, I did it. Come fight me. You know, square up. Yeah, square up. Yeah, square up. Yeah. And then number six, The Aviator. Story about famous director Howard Hughes, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, spending a lot of money, on, a lot of his money that he made through drill bits and his family's business of drill bits on his experimental aircraft and TWAs fighting off the famous Pam Am, Pan Am Airlines. Also follows his personal life and suffering of a mental illness. Uh, I gave this an 85%. It was a pretty cool movie. Uh, some of the scenes just kind of creeped me out, like the opening scene uh, where he spells, I think, quarantine, and like his mom get, just giving him a bath. It was just very, you know, it was just a weird scene, I thought. Uh, and th that's why I kind of rated it so low. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio was actually nominated, and of course for an Oscar, and of course did not win. Uh, one of the films that I thought, you know, pro he probably should have. Uh, it's like the Titanic. He also, but like Leonardo is a great actor. I think a lot of mostly if you have him in a movie, you have a good chance of having your film. Like I don't think he takes a bad film. Other than the Romeo and Juliet film, that was awful. His mo the modern version of Mo uh, of Romeo and Juliet, probably one of his worst movies that he's ever been in. Thy drugs are quick, you know. It was like about him taking ecstasy. Where in the actual uh, Romeo and Juliet, and it's uh, Juliet saying, "Oh, the the drugs are quick," or is it? Or yeah, that that kills her, and then. Actually, I gotta re I gotta rethink of Romeo and Juliet. But like one of the two says, "Thy drugs are quick." When they're talking about the drug that ends up killing them, you know. 
terrible film. Don't ever watch it. Uh, the not not the Aviator. Watch, definitely watch the Aviator. It's, I think it's a great film. But Romeo and Juliet, the modern version with Leonardo DiCaprio, terrible movie. Uh, but I gave the or, yeah I said this already. I gave it an eighty five percent. No number five, Interstellar. Uh, Earth's future has been written riddled uh, riddled by disasters, fam. Lease, er, famines and droughts. There is only one way to ensure mankind's survival. Interstellar travel. A newly discovered wormhole in the far reaches of the solar system allows a team of astronauts to go where no man has gone before. A planet that have that may have the right environment to subs er, sustain human life. I gave this an 87%. I think it's a great movie. M Matthew McConaughey, another actor that's pretty good, uh, you know, except for in Lincoln, his Lincoln commercials excluded. Those things are just, I, every time I look at those, they're just like, it's just him driving a Lincoln, but it's mostly him. You don't really ever see the car in Lincoln. It, and then he's talking about some random crap. It's just, those are kind of funny commercials, but, uh, he's a pretty good, uh, pretty good actor, I think. Uh, yeah, it, it, you know, this is kind of like one of those movies where it's like borderline, is it realistic? Well, yeah, I think it's it, way in the future. This could be a possible thing. Maybe, I, probably not. Uh, I, I don't know. It's it's one of those movies that's like, it's just such a good movie. I had to put it on the list. I'm sorry, Star Wars. It, it's that that I'm pretty sure will never happen. Star Wars, if it does happen, it's way after uh, Interstellar happens. So uh, yeah, uh, I gave it an 87 percent. Number four, Sully. I I. I Obvious. I feel like this is a great movie. Uh, my favorite part is the ending, when basically Sully and his uh, co-pilot just, you know, just basically just own the NTSB. And they, they're they like, oh, you definitely could have made it to all these airports, and then Sully's just like, oh yeah? Well, these people already knew the situation that I went through. Like, they probably practiced it multiple times, too. Where I was in this situation, I had to think about this. I probably spent 40, you know, a minute to 45, or 45 seconds to a minute thinking about what the possible things are doing, like, I can do. And where these people, they just reacted right away. So I, it's basically just like a big old, uh, haha, like, Sully uh, just ruined the NTSB's like investigation altogether just by that. Alt and it was great. Uh, it's a story of the miracle on Hudson. Uh, 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 when uh, Captain Chelsea Sullenberger, nicknamed Sully, glided and disabled the plane, or, or yeah, yeah, glided his disabled plane into a the frigid waters of the Hudson River, saving the lives of a hundred, all 155 souls on board. Uh, however, even as Sully was being heralded by public and the media for his underappreciated feat of aviation skill, and an investigation was unfolded that threatened to destroy his reputation and his career. And then he goes in and just kind of like, hold up, kind of just, wait a minute. I've flown for so long. I knew I could do this. This was probably the safest way without damaging buildings and without killing everyone on board. So, ha ha, NTSB, suck it, kind of deal. I gave this an 89% if you didn't, if I didn't say that already. Number three. This is probably where I'm going to uh, get roasted, and I'm I'm preparing, you know, just slaughter me on the on the uh, comments. 
uh, just don't go at my personal life. Just slaughter me for this reason. Uh, Top Gun. I, I, it's a good movie. Every, every single time someone thinks of an aviation movie, aerospace movie, it's Top Gun. The reason it's number three is they killed off Goose. Why did you have to kill off Goose? By far, like, he was the only one that kept Maverick sane. Somewhat. Like, uh, and... And, like, Maverick was even thinking about quitting and all this stuff after Goose died. Because, I, you know, just don't kill off Goose. That, that, oh, I, I can't even explain how much it uh, frustrates me. Uh, but, I, you know, it, it's the story of a Navy pilot ace going to the elite fighter school known as Top Gun. Uh, where he meets the girl, Charlie, and he is, you know, trying to win the Top Gun trophy and also get the girl. But, you know, Goose's life has to be gone in order for him to do both. Or, well, he doesn't even win the Top Gun trophy, but he does get the girl. If, if The movie was made in the 80s, so if you haven't watched it now, by now, you just... I can spoil it. It doesn't matter. Uh, number two, American Made. Uh, Barry Seal was just an ordinary pilot who worked for TWA. Hey, Howard Hughes's airline. Uh, before he was reunited with this, or recruited by the CIA in 1978, his work in South America eventually caught the eye of the M Mendel and. Melodon uh, cartel associated with Pablo Escobar, and who needed a man with his skill set. Uh, Barry became a drug trafficker, gun smuggler, and money launderer, soon ac acquiring the title The Gringo That Always Delivers. Uh, I thought it was a pretty good movie. You know, it he makes bank, like, so much cash, but, you know, it, it, it's all not worth it. I guess it's his pay, Tom Cruise's payback for, you know, killing off Goose. So, yeah, it, it was, I, I gave this a 92 uh, percentage, and then I guess that gives us, brings us to number one. Dun, dun, dun. Some intense music. The Martian. Uh, during a manned mission to Mars, astronaut uh, astronaut Mark Wat Wait, Watney 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 is presumed dead after a fierce storm and left behind by his crews. Watney was but Watney was, had survived and finds himself stranded alone on the hostile planet, with only, uh, a few supplies, he draw upon his integrity, wit, and spirit to subsist and find a way to single, signal to Earth that he is alive. Millions of miles away, NASA and a team of international scientists work tirelessly to bring the Martian home while his crewmates currently plot a daring, if not impossible, rescue mission as these stories of incredible bravery unfold. World becomes together and root for Wetney's safe return. I don't know if I'm... I'm definitely butchering that last name. But I gave this a 95%. You know, botanist. Let's go. Let's make some potatoes at the Potato Bowl. The famous Potato Bowl at North Dakota. Botanist. You know. I wonder if he had extra potatoes. And just was like, here, North Dakota. Enjoy them for your Potato Bowl. Make some fries out of them. I bet you if... I wonder if five guys ever used his potatoes to make their fries. Botanist.
I know this is, wasn't based off a true story, but you know we're going to Mars soon. So, or did we go to Mars? We're going. We've been to Mars, and we're going to Mars soon. Uh, Elon Musk is going to be like SpaceX to Mars. Let's go, rock out. So, yeah, that concludes the top ten. Uh, I'm. Uh, oh, I guess I'll go over how I'm doing. In my private pilot's course, I'm almost finished. I got my check read, and that's it. I, I'm so close to being a private pilot, so close. Uh, probably going to do a review flight before I take my uh, check ride. Uh, a little nervous about the oral, but yeah, it's, it's <clears throat> crunch time. Let's go. Hopefully, I can get done so I can enjoy at least so eight days of summer. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so that's all for today. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Stay frosty.